What's up everyone? Welcome to the Demon Squeeded Thanksgiving. We're going to be making some Greek food today. We're going to be doing a lamb shank stew actually. So the reason why we started doing lamb is when my yaya or my grandmother passed away, which was the Greek side of my family, my yaya passed away and I want to keep the Greek traditions alive. So lamb is usually what we stick to on the holidays. But I think the other thing too for David and I is we live a bodybuilding lifestyle year round. So what do we usually eat? Chicken and turkey. Most people don't eat turkey on a regular basis, yep. but we do. So that was something like for us, we've been together almost seven years now and celebrating Thanksgiving and Christmas. We're like, do we really want turkey? And that's when we decided, okay, let's start our own tradition and do it Greek style. So we make a Greek salad as well as usually rice and potatoes. And then, and then desserts, I usually do an apple pie, which is something just growing up has been a tradition for me. And I do it a gluten-free crust and a little bit healthier for the filling, a little bit lower sugar. So that's what we're gonna be cooking today. One thing I do want to preface is making sure that the nutrition labels actually align to what they probably are. For instance, I was just looking at 10 pounds of lamb shank and it says, that it has one gram of carbs. Lamb does not have carbs in them. So anyway, uh, nutrition labels, you guys. Read them. Read them. Learn them. Learn them. Love them. Love them. Realize that a lot of them are wrong. So we're gonna jump into the high level overview of how to go about cooking this, right? So I've got some garlic powder, and then we have dill and cilantro, which I always add in for a Greek dish. Oregano is another one you can add. And then some iodized sea salt. Flour. So you don't have to use regular flour, you can use gluten-free as well for this recipe. So one huge ingredient that I used to use all the time when it came to sauteing, mushrooms, vegetables, meats. I love wine. I like Cabernet for cooking for sure. A Merlot Cabernet mix is gonna add a nice little flavor and zest. Of course, you guys can drink along the way, and that's your choice. Just make sure you're not drunk when you're cooking or that you have enough for your food. Like we said, we're making side dishes. I'm taking charge of those, so I'm going to take my yellow potatoes. We're probably gonna make all of these, to be honest, because there's gonna be four of us here, but these are actually gonna be macro-friendly mashed potatoes. I use almond milk, a little bit of butter if people want it. I usually don't add it into the big batch. I'll have it on the side. I like to give them a quick little rinse. Cut them into quarters and we're going to throw them into a pressure cooker. You can use your Instapot, pressure cooker, whatever works best for you. And then you're gonna add water just above the height that the potatoes go. Okay, y'all, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually gonna turn on this stove to a medium temp right now. They, I believe that in the recipe, they say that measure your olive oil, however we're Greek here. Now, the reasoning why is this will actually add flavoring to the recipe when we add everything together. We wanna to make sure that it has a nice bold olive oil taste. I'm gonna dredge these bad boys in some salt, pepper, and flour. So because we have guests coming over, uh, my mom and sister and her, my brother-in-law, we are doubling up this recipe. Every once in a while you get some lamb shanks that are some bad boys. You know that this is the one that I'm going to be eating. This is the biggest one in the group, so. And I will be having a second, by the way. Our Greek salad is pretty simple. We're gonna start off with fresh romaine lettuce. Once again, whole foods. I always get organic for my lettuces and green vegetables because they typically are more exposed to chemicals if they're not. We have a cucumber some carrots, tomatoes. I have mozzarella and feta cheese, some olives, and then we have a balsamic dressing as well as I have a Mediterranean, or I have a ranch dressing in there as well. 
So depending on what people want, we've got options. We also have regular olive oil. You can make your own Greek dressing with some olive oil, garlic, lemon. We have lemons as well, so we can drizzle that on top. But I usually make like an assembly line and we'll show you that of the different salad toppings so that people can choose what they want. So while the lamb is starting to sear, I usually prepare the added seasoning and basically the stew broth that will be going into the Dutch oven. So that's going to include our wine, broth, tomatoes, onions, seasonings, and oranges. And I actually put the oranges in the blender because you do want the orange peel as well. You get some nutrients from the orange peel. So I always recommend getting organic oranges for this specifically. All right, y'all, so we are putting it to 325 degrees on the oven. We're gonna pop this bad boy in to let the lamb shank braise and to create that nice stew. When you're searing it, you're straight up searing it. It does not have to be cooked through and through. That is what this part of the process is for, but it is a slow braise. Cover it with foil to keep the moisture into it. And that's pretty much it. You're on the home stretch at this point, and then you get to enjoy the food. Oh, this is hot. Yeah. 